Hey guys, Back Photography here, and today we are looking at mirrorless cameras versus DSLR cameras, in particular for portrait photography. Now, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and press that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos coming up. And in this video, we're going to be shooting some portraits outside in the city, and we're going to be shooting on two cameras, my Canon 5D Mark IV DSLR camera and my Sony A7R2 mirrorless camera. And we're going to be looking at a few different lenses as well and then we can have a look at the comparison between the Sony A7R2 and the Canon 5D Mark IV at three different focal lengths, 35mm, 50mm and 85mm. So I'm going to leave in the description a link to all the camera equipment I used in this video. I'm also going to leave in the description a link to all of the RAW files as well so that you can edit the photos in your spare time if you want to have a look at the differences in dynamic range and things like that. So before we get started and having a look at all of the photos and doing the comparisons of that sort of stuff, I'm just going to explain a little bit about the differences between a mirrorless camera and a DSLR camera. So essentially, I'm not going to go too in depth, but basically the difference is that a DSLR, which stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex, has a little mirror inside. So when you are looking through your optical viewfinder, what you're seeing is actually what is exactly coming through the lens. It's hitting a mirror and then going into your eye. Whereas with a mirrorless camera, it doesn't have this mirror, that's why it's called mirrorless, and basically what you're seeing on the viewfinder is a digital image which is electronically generated through the sensor. So when it comes to the pros and cons of each system, historically DSLRs have been preferred by professionals because they tend to have larger sensors, a faster autofocus, they normally have a larger selection of lenses and things like that, and also, although this is a disadvantage for some people, they are more um, large and heavy and robust. But they also come with disadvantages. So mirrorless cameras, for example, um, are smaller and lighter, so they're more versatile in certain situations. They are quieter as well because they don't have that mirror inside that has to move out of the way when you take a photo. So there's no flapping around, or at least not as much flapping around. Um, and also mirrorless cameras tend to have image stabilization. And what we're seeing in recent times is actually there's a really closing of the gap between all the things that DSLRs were um, better at now compared to mirrorless cameras. So for example, a sensor size um, is, is not, there's not really any difference in sensor size now. So for example, my Sony a7R2 is a full frame sensor and it's 42 megapixels, I believe. Whereas my Canon 5D Mark IV is actually less megapixels, uh, but the same full frame size. Also with autofocus, uh, historically mirrorless cameras were not very good at autofocus, but now um, they have very, very good autofocus. Some would even argue that it's better than DSLRs. So professionals these days aren't just stuck with using DSLR cameras. They now have a choice of shooting mirrorless as well. So here are the first two photos that we're going to be looking at today. The one on the left was shot on a Canon 5D Mark IV and the one on the right was shot with my Sony a7R2. Both of them were shot with a Sigma 35mm 1.4 and I'll put these settings up as well so you can see the settings in camera. Now I don't know about you but I almost can't tell any difference between these two photos. What I can see in the uh, stairs above them on the handrails that the Canon was a little bit more on the green side, whereas the Sony has shot with a slightly more blue color balance. Another thing that I've noticed as well is that the orange tint in the photo is a little bit more pronounced in the Canon photo. But apart from that, I really can't tell much difference between these two images. On the screen, the image on the left from the Canon is at 17% size, whereas the Sony a7R2 image on the right is at 14% size. So you can see that the difference in megapixel count for these cameras makes a little bit of a difference between the size of the images. One thing that you can't see in these images that I think is actually a very important point um, as a pro for the mirrorless system is that because you have a face detection, it helps get the angle that you want without having to do any crouching or slouching or anything like that. Because I'm six foot three, so I'm quite a tall guy. And often I'll be way taller than the models that I'm shooting. So I'll have to crouch down and be in all these strange poses so I get the shot. I don't actually have to do that with my Sony because I can simply tilt the screen to face me and then move my camera wherever I like and see exactly where the focus is gonna hit. So let me know in the comments what you think is the better photo out of the two. Personally, I don't really think either of them is better than the other. I think they're so close um, to being identical that it really doesn't make any difference. Now we're going to look at 50 mil and we're gonna be looking at these two photos here. So again, with these two photos, the differences are very subtle. 
Um, we can see on the left with the Canon 5D Mark IV picture that the image has a slightly more green and blue tint, whereas with the Sony a7R II photo on the right, you can see a slightly more reddish tint. These files have just been converted straight from RAW into JPEG. You can see on the right in the Sony a7R II photo that the highlights are a little bit more bright and the shadows might even be a little bit more dark as well, particularly in her hair. Whereas with the Canon 5D Mark IV, the image is a little bit flatter straight out of the camera. But these differences in highlights might just be because the photo on the right is very slightly higher exposed than the photo on the left. I made sure to shoot both of these photos um, so that the camera would think that the image was exactly at zero plus exposure composition. So the camera got to decide in both of these photos where exactly was perfect exposure in the image. So it looks to me like the Sony a7R II favors a slightly brighter image at zero exposure compensation. So let me know in the comments what you think is the better photo out of those two. Again, I really don't think it matters that much. Maybe the Sony a7R II was a little bit better and it is kind of nice to have that face detection so I can have the camera wherever I like when I take the shot. And also having a little bit extra megapixels means I could crop my photo in a little bit more and still maintain a good amount of detail in the image. So finally, we're going to look at two more photos and these are gonna be shot at 85 mil. One thing to note with my Sony mirrorless camera is that we are using adapted lenses from a Canon system onto my Sony camera. So we're using the a7R2 Sigma EF to E mount converter so that I can use the same lenses in each of these photos. So finally, these are the two photos we're going to be looking at at 85 mil. Now, one thing to note with using Canon lenses on a Sony mirrorless camera using an adapter is that sometimes you will get a bad autofocus where your lens will completely miss the subject and give you a incredibly blurry image. So if you're thinking of shooting with a Sony mirrorless camera in particular and using Canon lenses adapted to your Sony camera, some of the lenses offered by Canon, such as the Sigma 35mm 1.4 for Canon and the Sigma 85mm for Canon will very often just completely miss focus. So that is one negative to choosing the mirrorless camera over the reliability of a DSLR camera for autofocus. So as you can see with these images, again, there's really not that much difference between the two photos. Now, obviously we are shooting in daytime and we're shooting at low apertures and we're shooting at low ISOs. And what that means is, especially with the low ISO, you're getting the cleanest, crispest image to your sensor. And because these are both flagship cameras that are incredibly expensive and incredibly high end, you're going to get a fantastic image from both of these cameras. Now, if we were to look at high ISO photos, we might see more of a difference, although I do have a suspicion that both of the cameras will perform incredibly well and there'll still be only a little bit of difference between image quality. But there are still large difference between these two cameras, particularly in things like battery life. So for example, for this photo shoot, my Canon, I shot probably five or 600 photos for this photo shoot just on my Canon camera. And my camera was still at full battery, four bars out of four. But with my Sony a7R II, I was on one battery out of four and I was just about to replace it for another one because I was worried that I might run out of battery in my camera during the shoot. So if you're needing your camera to shoot hundreds and hundreds of photos, for example, if you're a wedding photographer or if you do a lot of portraits, it might be worth considering getting a DSLR, but you can solve this problem by having a battery grip and the batteries aren't really that expensive anyway. So I don't really think that's too much of a problem for me. So now that we've looked at the comparisons of all the photos and we can see that there's really not that much difference between my Canon 5D Mark IV and my Sony a7R II, what is my conclusion for whether you would want a DSLR or a mirrorless camera for portrait photography? Well, for me personally, I think that the mirrorless camera performs better because of its fantastic face detection and my ability to move my camera anywhere and easily nail the shot at really great focus even at super low apertures because I have the flexibility of moving the tilted screen and seeing exactly where I'm shooting and what's in focus from any angle. Now, that's not to say that the Canon doesn't have its advantages. For example, it's got fantastic autofocus, so you don't miss as many shots, but for portrait photography, you often don't have a quickly moving subject. You often have multiple opportunities to take the photo that you like. So personally for me, the mirrorless camera wins this round. 
So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to be making lots more content like this in the future. And remember, all the equipment from this photo shoot is in the description if you want to check that out, as well as the raw files as well, so that you can have an edit of these photos and let me know what you think as well.